Hello everyone, welcome to the world of English, English Mania. This is Priyanka Arun. Today let's discuss a mock heroic poem by Alexander Pope, which is very important from the examination point of view. So before going to the details, those who are watching my channel for the first time, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon. First of all, let's see the profile of the author, Alexander Pope. He is one of the greatest English poets and the second most quoted writer in the English language, the foremost poet of the early 18th century and he is best known for his satirical and discursive poetry and his major works are The Rape of the Lock, The Danziad, An Essay on Criticism, Translation of Homer and he is a master of heroic couplet. The Rape of the Lock, it is a mock heroic narrative poem that is a poem that mocks the classical tradition, especially the classical stereotypes and it is one of the most commonly cited examples of high burlesque. It was first published anonymously in Lindot's Miscellaneous Poems and Translations in 1712 and a revised edition by Pope was appeared in 1714. The final form of the poem appeared in 1717 with an addition of Clarissa's speech on humor. The poem was much translated and contributed to the growing popularity of mock heroic in Europe. Now let's have a look at the characters. Belinda, Belinda is the heroine of the poem. She is based on the historical Arabella Fomo, a member of Pope's circle of prominent Roman Catholics. The Baron. This is the pseudonym of the historical Robert Lord Peter, the young gentleman in Pope's social circle who offended Arabella Fomo and her family by cutting off a lock of her hair. Carol. Carol represents the historical John Carol, a friend of Pope and of the two families. It was Carol who suggested that Pope encourage a reconciliation by writing a humorous poem. Ariel. Ariel is Belinda's guardian self who oversees an army of invisible protective deities. Umbriel. Umbriel is the chief gnome who travels to the cave of spleen and returns with a bag full of sighs, tears to aggravate Belinda's sadness. Clarissa. Clarissa is a woman in attendance at the Hampton Court party. She lends the Baron a pair of scissors with which he cuts Belinda's hair. And it is Clarissa who delivers a moralizing lecture by the end of the poem. Thalestress. Thalestress is one of Belinda's friends and she is named after the queen of Amazons and she represents the historical Gertrude Morley, a friend of Pope's and the wife of George Brown. She yells Belinda on in her anger and demands that the log be returned. Sir Plume. Sir Plume is Thalestress Bio who makes an ineffectual challenge to the Baron. He represents the historical Sir George Brown, a member of Pope's social circle. There are five cantos in the poem. Let's see the first canto. The poem opens with an invocation to the muse and the line, a dire offense from amorous causes and the mighty contest from trivial things. In these lines, Pope gives us the subject matter of the poem and we can see Belinda asleep. It is morning time and a dream is sent to Belinda by Ariel, her guardian self. And in that dream, she sees a handsome youth who informs her that she is protected by a thousand bright inhabitants of the air. And also, he warns Belinda of an impending dread event and urge her to beware of all, but most beware of man. Upon rising, she sees a love letter arrived for her and she forgets all the details of the dream. After that, she is getting ready to go to Hampton Court party. 
With the help of the cells, she dress up and she emerges from her chamber. Candle 2. In Candle 2, we can see Belinda sets off for Hampton Court Palace, traveling by boat on the river Thames, accompanied by a group of fashionable ladies and gentlemen. She is so beautiful that she rivals the sun in that particular morning. One of her devotee, the Baron, greatly admires her ringlets and has resolved to steal them for himself by force or by fraud. On this particular morning, he rose early to build an altar to love at which to pray for success in this venture. The powers heard his prayer and chose to grant half of it. Ariel, who is very much concerned and worried about Belinda's safety, summons an army of cells to protect her. A number of cells report on their post and they are waiting for the birth of fate. Ariel warns them in the case of neglecting his order, the cells will be punished. The third candle begins with the description of the Hampton Court Palace and the luxurious amusements of life at the palace. Belinda, along with her friends, arrives at Hampton Court Palace and engage in the day's activities like gossiping, discussing about balls, fashion and political matters. In the afternoon, she sits to play cards with the Baron and another man. It is described as the battle by Poe and the men as armies. As a commander of the army, Belinda wins the game. After the game, coffee is served to the ladies and gentlemen at Hampton Court. The vapors of the coffee inspires the Baron with new strategies for stealing Belinda's locks. With the assistance of Clarissa, who presents him with a pair of scissors, he endeavors to cut Belinda's hair. But he fails three times because the cells frustrate his every attempt. In a last ditch effort to protect his charge, Ariel accesses Belinda's mind with the intent to warn her. But he is shocked to find an early lover lurking at her heart. Belinda's strong attraction to the Baron places her beyond Ariel's control and the Baron wins. The scissors blade finally closed on the curl and the Baron celebrates his victory while Belinda's screams of horror rend the frightened skies. In Canto 4, we can see Belinda in great despair and the cells in great sorrow because they couldn't protect Belinda. A gnome named Umbriel descends to the center of the earth to the cave of spleen and he comes with a bag full of sighs, sobs, passions and the war of tongues. Meanwhile, two handmaidens attend Belinda in her distress and they were na ill nature and affectation. Umbriel reaches the Hampton Court Palace and he empties the bag by fueling the two women, Belinda and Thalestress. Thalestress attempts to convince Belinda to avenge the wrongs committed by the Baron, but she has failed and then she tries on Sir Plume and he made him request to the Baron to return the logs. But the Baron mocks Sir Plume and refuses his request. Belinda curses the day's events and regret at not having listened to the cell's warning or the morning's evil omens. In Canto 5, we can see Clarissa attracting the attention of the people gathered by delivering a speech on good humor. She asks why society places so much importance to the beauty. In her opinion, women must have other qualities especially good humor. But she couldn't pacify Belinda or tail stress. They were planning to launch an attack on the men to regain the curl. They prepares other women for that. The humans fight like gods, nor dread a mortal wound. The women quickly overpower many of the men. 
Though the humans cannot find Belinda's log in this attack, the muse saw it rise towards the sky and it becomes a sudden star and part of the constellation. The poem finally addresses Belinda, urging her not to mourn thy ravished hair. And the star will remain a testament of her beauty. Pope concludes the poem with a final compliment to Arabella Fomo, the historical inspiration for Belinda. Despite the poem's social critiques, the poem ends with little moral development. Belinda's hair will grow back and her beauty will be admired even after her death. The poem is thus an example of Horatian satire. Rather than exposing the evils of the aristocracy, the poem provides a gentle critique that generally sympathizes with the characters in spite of their follies. Thank you for watching. Hope you understood the lesson. See you with another lesson. Please subscribe to the channel for similar videos and hit the bell icon. Goodbye. Take care.